ladies and gentlemen, Steve Donahue. You know, sometimes I wish that I had uh, climbed Mount Everest. Because if I had done that, I could say, life is like a mountain. If you want to succeed, you need to have a, a goal, and you need to map out a route, and keep climbing until you get to the top. But no, I had to be different. I had to cross the Sahara Desert. Imagine following a map in this environment. Can't do it. The terrain is constantly shifting. But think how often life is like that. Before the ink is dry on your map, something has shifted. Life is like that. I think the most important journeys in life cannot be mapped out. Some of those journeys, they don't even have a destination. Take marriage, for example. What's the destination of marriage? I asked that question in Montreal, and a French-Canadian guy, an older fellow, raised his hand. He says, oui, oui. The goal of the mariage is to outlive the other one. <laughs> oh, oh, great. Who are you going to high-five at that finish line? <laughs> the most important journeys in life can't be mapped out, so you have to follow a compass. A compass can guide you or your company even when the terrain is shifting, even if you don't have a destination. As soon as we get into the Sahara Desert, we realize this is a very dangerous place. As soon as I, I see this, I realize I am completely unprepared for this experience, especially when it comes to the clothing that I've brought with me. I don't know what I was thinking. What would be comfortable in the Sahara Desert? Uh, really, really, really tight shorts. Yeah, that. <laughs> and maybe I'll mug some six year old and steal his t shirt. I look like I'm auditioning for the village people. <laughs> and perhaps the most important benefit is that a compass can lead you across uncharted territory, something that uh, a map cannot do. I mean, think about it. This conference is about changing lives. If you want to change a life, you have to cross uncharted territory. One day I get an email from my publisher in San Francisco, and he's telling me that a Korean publisher has bought the rights to publish my book and translate it into Korean. So I email the publisher in Korea, and I say, hey, how many books do you have to sell in Korea for a bestseller? They say, 10,000. I say, Steve, don't get your hopes up. We've never sold 10,000 copies of a book like this. We'd be thrilled if we sold half of that. As of this month, the Korean version of my book is in its 21st printing, and I've sold over 57,000 copies. Thank you. Thank you. I have absolutely no idea why my book is a bestseller in Korea. So, I've decided to go to Korea next year. I have got to find out how my book, which sold only 200 copies in Canada, sold 57,000 in Korea. I know almost nothing about Korea. All I know is when I get there, I won't know what's going to happen. And I'm heading into uncharted territory with only my compass headings to guide me. And going to Korea and being with Korean people will surely change my life. And my question for you is this. What uncharted territory do you need to cross? And what's the compass that's going to guide you on that journey? The nomads had come north from the border. The border had reopened. Traffic was beginning to move south, and they knew of a truck at the oasis in Temenreset that was getting loaded up, and it was going to head south across the rest of the Sahara. 
They also knew some nomad friends who had sold their camels and were going to ride on top of that truck. They told Talos and I there was room for us, so we hurried back to Tamarasat and we got on that truck. <laughs> and that's how we crossed the rest of the Sahara Desert. The Sahara Desert is the largest desert on Earth. And we are going to start this story in the middle of the Sahara Desert. I want you to imagine that you and your friend are stranded. You are all alone. You've set up a campsite near some sand dunes. You have a small fire started. The sun has just gone down and it's getting cold quickly. And in that last little bit of light that remains, you see, way off in the distance, someone approaching you. And I should tell you that in the Sahara Desert, when someone approaches, you pay attention. What's your name, sir? Dave? What do you think, Dave? Uh, you think the nomad comes back? You don't think he comes back? Well, Dave, uh, it wouldn't be much of a story if he didn't. <laughs> No, that's it. We never saw him again, you know. <laughs> you want to make another guess, Dave? <laughs> Good choice. This time he points at you, Dave, and he says, Venez avec moi. Come with me. And he turns and disappears. And you're thinking, come with him? What if he's got eight or nine of his fellow tribesmen on the other side of that dune with their knives drawn? What if this is the oldest trick in the Tuareg book of ambushes? Think about it. What would you have done? What would any of you have done? You have basically the same information I had. Let's take a vote. By show of hands, how many of you would have um, followed that nomad into the darkness? Keep your hands up. Interesting. And to think your customers trust their insurance to such fools. By show of hands, how many of you would get the heck out of there while you still had a chance? Uh-huh. And where would you go? By show of hands, how many of you would like to know what my friend and I did? <laughs> 